This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk about the money printers go burr being turned back on in England. So we've said many times on this channel that the Fed's going to keep hiking until something blows up. And yesterday we did have something blow up in a very mysterious way. Looks like there was some sabotage possibly from, from the U.S. We also have been witnessing the implosion of the British pound. It's hitting levels now that it hasn't seen since the mid 80s. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the money printers being turned back on in England. Bank of England, for those of you who don't know, is just the central bank in the in England. And it's been around since 1694. So it's one of the oldest central banks. And they issue, the, the UK government issues bonds, government bonds called gilts. And these have different maturities. They're, they're basically the equivalent of US treasuries for the UK. And they tend to be issued in, in maturities of 5, 10, or 30 years. So what's been happening, just like in the US, the Bank of England has been buying government bonds and putting it on its balance sheet. And they're still well above levels that they were before the great financial crisis of 2008. But what they've been sort of signaling, at least they were over the summer, was that they wanted to shrink their balance sheet. And they were actually publishing articles saying that we're going to set a really good example. And this, the Federal Reserve, which is the US Central Bank, should follow our example. So their plan was, the Bank of England's plan was to actually sell these gilts that were on their balance sheet rather than just allowing them to mature in what's called rolling off. And they, they reiterate that the Fed could learn from it. So what happened instead, rather than shrinking their balance sheet, what they're now, now doing is they're turning the money printers back on. And instead of selling these government bonds that they have on their balance sheet, they are buying them. This just happened about an hour ago. Bank of England took emergency action on Wednesday to stem a crisis in government debt markets, suspending its program to sell gilts, to sell these government bonds, and instead pledging to buy long dated bonds. This is quantitative easing. This is QE. This is the opposite of quantitative tightening. I'll link to the Bank of England announcement here where they go into the details. Basically what was happening is you have so many people who own both domestically and abroad who own these gilts. They're considered a very safe investment and it's the kind of thing that pension funds and other and retirees, etc., banks load up on. And so when that starts, when these gilts start crashing, it risks systemic damage to people's balance sheets and to banks' balance sheets because it's traditionally considered a very safe investment, just like U.S. Treasuries have been considered that. So what the Bank of England announced this morning is that they will carry out temporary purchases. And if you've been in the financial markets for any period of time, you know that when a government says something is temporary, just like the war in Iraq was going to be a temporary intervention, these things are never temporary. They last for a very long period of time and they mark a turning point. So the Bank of England said they're going to carry out quote unquote temporary purchases of long dated UK government bonds starting September 28th. And then here's the really important language. These purchases will be carried out on whatever scale is necessary. And so they're going to do whatever it takes to stabilize the government bond market. Now, where does the Bank of England get the money to buy these bonds? It's the money printers. They print up fresh British pounds in order to do it. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask you to hit that subscribe and like button, especially if you watch my channel a lot and have not yet subscribed. So if you're investing in government bonds, there are basically three ways that you can make money or two, two basic ways you can make money holding government bonds. The first way you make money is if the government, if the central bank cuts interest rates in the country after you buy the bonds, because when interest rates go lower, the price of bonds goes up and you have capital appreciation. The other way you make money, especially as a non-domestic or foreign or international investor, is you buy these bonds and then you hope that the currency in which they're denominated will go up more against your currency and not go the other way. So you can make it in two ways. You can make money in two ways, interest rates falling or the currency appreciating. And what's been happening with gilts with UK government bonds has been the opposite. The bond prices themselves have been crashing because the Bank of England has been hawkish, just like the Federal Reserve in the US. Their underlying currency in which these bonds are denominated, the British pound, has been crashing against the US dollar, especially the last few days. And then of course the US dollar has been crashing against real things. We still have eight or 9% inflation in the US as of the, la the latest reading. So this is really like 
three levels of what I'm calling crashiness here. We can see the price of government bonds here uh, going off a cliff in over the past few months. This little bounce we're getting this morning is on the announcement from the Bank of England. And again, this is bond prices. This is not yields. This is bond prices moving up and yields dropping as a result. We can see that the British pound is selling off on the news, continuing to sell off. It has fallen just a tremendous amount in just the last uh, the last uh, couple months. And we can see that we're trading at levels versus the US dollar that have been, been seen since the mid 1980s and the Plaza Accord in which the US dollar was intentionally weakened. So these are multi, multi-decade lows for the British pound against the US dollar. And I think this is the great irony here that this was just not too long ago, about a year ago, when the Bank of England governor, Andrew Bailey said, that you prepare to lose all your money if you hold cryptocurrencies, especially Bitcoin. And instead what happened, the most pristine, safe investment that's possible in the UK has been plummeting, not just in price terms, not just in currency terms, not just in currency terms against the US dollar, but also in terms of, of real purchasing power. So this is what happens if you trust central bankers. The problem is all fiat currencies are ship coins. The British pound is a ship coin, US dollar is only a slightly better ship coin, but ultimately it will meet the same fate. We can see that this intervention is really definitely pushing down yields in the UK. So the 10 year benchmark rate, as the price goes up, the yield falls. It's fallen almost a half a percentage point. It's fallen 46 basis points down to close to 4%, down from 4.5% just yesterday. And so this inter intervention is working. People take central banks very seriously when they say they're going to do something like this because they, they basically have unlimited firepower. You don't want to fight something like this because they can buy an unlimited amount of government bonds. The only problem is their only constraint really is that they end up killing the currency in the process of doing this. And this is one reason the pound is showing even more weakness this morning. The important thing to notice here too is that there are a lot of people who say, oh, the money printers will only come back on once inflation has fallen a lot. What's happened instead is the Bank of England just turned the money printers back on while inflation is still very high in the UK, especially given energy input costs. And this is what all central banks are going to be forced to do in the coming months. They're going to have to print money into an inflation spike, and this is going to have devastating results for the purchasing power of their currencies. And unless you're hiding in something like Bitcoin, you're going to be hurt very badly by this. We can see that UK consumer price inflation uh, is still, it's comparable to the US, at least these fake government numbers are. All these numbers are probably much higher, both in the US and the UK, but it's basically about the same as, as US inflation, somewhere between eight and 9%. People have been pointing out that what happened yesterday or the, earlier this week is that the cost of borrowing for the UK government moved above. In other words, the interest rates moved higher than the cost of borrowing for countries like Greece and Italy, which sort of have this international reputation of being uh, financially profligate, shall we say. But I think this is a misleading comparison because Greek and Italian bonds themselves, the yields on them, in other words, the cost of borrowing has been kept artificially low by the European Central Bank, the ECB, by printing them and buying, uh, buying them with freshly printed euros. So this is a misleading thing. It's basically a question of who has the money printers on the highest. And for a while, the ECB did, and now the UK is catching up the BOE by turning back on the money printers. And as I said, this is something that's going to happen too, and we don't know at what point it's gonna happen. I would have guessed it would have happened already because it's just been international destruction from this terrible, terrible monetary policy that the Fed is pursuing. But at some point soon, the Fed is going to have to turn its money printers back on into, the, into this inflation spike, even with inflation remaining stubbornly high, just like the Bank of England is doing. And what will probably cause this is some dysfunction in the money markets, in the US financial plumbing, in, in US Treasury, in other words, government bond, liquidity, bid-ask spreads, liquidity, volatility uh, in the US. And this is what happened with UK gilts. And when it happens with US Treasuries, it's impossible to know when, then the, the Fed will need to reverse course. And the announcement will be we're, it, we're reinstituting temporary stabilization in the US Treasury market, something like that. But we will know, in fact, that they will have pivoted and turned the money printers back on. In the meantime, Bitcoin remains, in my opinion, the best place 
to hide from these very bad central bank actors. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.